All right, guys, we got a O2 sensor, pre-cat O2 sensor simulator, or EFIE, uh, whatever you want to call it. They basically do the same thing. It uh, interferes with the signal line going from the O2 sensor to the ECM and um, fools it. We got our power on light here. We got our uh, oscillating voltage here. And, of course, we got the meter set up so you can see what's happening there. Uh, we found, we played around with a couple of EFIEs and some uh, O2 sensors simulators we found on online and we found that they usually did nothing more than lock your car into open loop or create a rich condition only or lean condition only um, had a hard time keeping them in the mid-range uh, running your car like it would be normal so we came up with this device here to try to give us um, full versatility uh, lean rich and everywhere in between and that's pretty much what this thing here does so uh, our adjustment is this pot right here and you can see our voltage is oscillating and we have it oscillating at a certain rate which is um, the voltages themselves and the, the rate was was fairly critical it took us a while to find that out we turn this up you see that that it's at one volt and even though it's oscillating here what you're looking for in your adjustment is the highest voltage when you're adjusting this um, that one volt is where it's adjusted so that one volt um, would make the ECM think that the engine is running very rich and then it would uh, adjust accordingly make it run lean and you know, I'll turn this all the way down and if you watch even though it's oscillating whatever high the highest voltage is is where the setting number you're looking for would be so right now this is set for 0.9 we turn it down a little bit more we're looking for the highest voltage that would be 0.8 and so on so that was where you were setting would be and that's how you would adjust it even though it's oscillating move that down to 0.1 now that 0.1 value again is what the ECM is going to see and it's going to think that the engine is running very lean and riching it up and that's pretty much what the uh, the other simulators and EFIEs did now this one we can adjust in the middle and again you know some others did were adjustable too but they didn't seem to work in the middle we had a real hard time getting a, a mid-ranged mid adjustment and um, you know if you want your car to run normal that, that's pretty much where you want it and for the HHO guys you, you want to experiment between a lean condition and normal I would say um, you could probably run on the lean side anyway because you're you're putting the HHO in the engine but you know high performance guys if you do a little cat change maybe some some other air box intake or whatever you don't want to get a, a computer hooked up to it or, or run a wideband O2 sensor with the electronics to drive that because that's very expensive this is kinda like a mid-range it gives you a little bit of control and and so on so anyway, like I said, this works pretty much everywhere from a lean condition to a rich condition and in between. Um, this first switch here, now this is unlike anything I've seen so far. This first switch here switches back and forth between the simulator and your normal O2 sensors. This unit is set up for two O2 sensors, two pre-cat O2 sensors, a V engine, six cylinder, eight cylinder, ten, whatever. Um, up would hook the simulator to the ECM and the simulator or I'm sorry the ECM would only see what the simulator is putting out which is what that number is right now if we click this down that switch hooks your O2 sensors back in line with the ECM gets rid of the simulator now the car is running as if it were factory hooks the O2 sensors back in line um, if for some reason a few other sensors were thrown in engine code that you wouldn't pick up because the simulator does interfere with that now you would pick them up so at the end of the day you could hit that switch and see if uh, you know everything's running good to check to see what the O2 sensors are doing if you want to monitor what the O2 sensors are actually doing themselves this is what this switch is for okay so right now with the switch up it's recording a simulator voltage even though I got this one hooked up for O2's this switch is monitoring what the simulator voltage is doing right now um, this is of course on a bench so when I switch these to O2's we're not going to get anything um, I will show some more video later of, um, hooked up to a car but when I put this switch down okay now that hooks the O2 sensors themselves up to this meter so you'll be able to see how the O2 sensors are reacting okay the third switch is going to switch between your left bank O2 sensor and your right bank O2 sensor so it, whether this thing is set for simulator or O2 sensor when you have this down, it's the meter hooks to your O2 sensor so you can see what they're doing. 
up would tell you what your left bank is doing, and you would see those those um, those values changing because that's what your your engine's constantly doing that. And you'll see what the left bank is doing, and uh, it's either from 0.1 to about 1 volt, maybe 1.2 volts. That's what the O2 send to the ECM, and that's what you're going to see on that meter. So if you see like let's say a point, an average of a 0.5 or a 0.6 seems to be your your constant pulsation you'll know it's running pretty much normal a little lower than that in the 2 and 0 0.2 0 0.3 area it's running lean or 0 0.8 0 0.9 it's running rich left bank quick uh, switch this down hooks up the right bank O2 sensor keep an eye on your voltages and you'll know if it's rich lean or someone in between hit the switch back up this middle one right here that hooks the simulator back up to the meter again this switch just hooks the meter up up to either the simulator or it hooks this meter up to the O2 sensors this switch hooks either the simulator itself to the ECM or it hooks the O2 sensor to the ECM so kind of a nice little little setup there um, a bit of versatility gives you a little bit of uh, control with what you're doing and you can actually see it via the meter there so that was kind of good too I'm um, trying to think we did experiment with a couple different cars on this OBD1 and OBD2 um, believe it or not the OBD2 responded much better than the OBD1 so we got a few more things we're doing for OBD1 um, it will work not as well as on OBD2 though OBD2 we had full control throughout the whole rich and lean scenario uh, we had it hooked up to my father's O2 Crown Vic and of course, that has a V8 with a 4.6 liter in it. And he, he had it running lean, he had it running rich, and he had it running perfectly normal, everywhere in between. Uh, the OBD1 wasn't quite as responsive. It either ran rich or lean, and sometimes in between. But we got a couple things we're going to do for OBD1. Uh, HHO guys, if you have an OBD1, this would still work for that because it will lean it out. Um, our next experiment, I'm going to put some video of an O2 Trans Am. And that's the LS1, I believe. And we're going to show some good video with that. And hopefully that will work out good for you. I'm trying to just go over my notes here and make sure there's uh, anything else I can mention. Um, but I think we're pretty good for now. So if you, uh, I actually just want you guys' comments. What do you think? Um, just let me know. You'll be able to get a hold of me. And um, I'll get some new video up of hopefully that Trans Am in a few days. So appreciate your time.